I'm Chara, a Splatoon pro player since the very first game, and today I want to help you guys figure out your playstyle and role in Splatoon 3. Regardless of if you're a new or veteran player, this should help you figure out what weapons you'll enjoy playing the most. I'm going to be going over the main roles, what types of weapons you'll see in them, and how they're basically played. If you guys like this and want to see either more Splatoon 3 guide content or more videos in general, be sure to subscribe as it helps me out a ton. And without further ado, let's get right into it. First up, what are weapon roles? Basically, this is your playstyle in a team. Think of it as your primary job. And there are three main versions of these. First up, we have your front lines. These are basically some of the more kill-heavy weapons that you might see in your comps, but there's a bit more nuance to them. There's weapons that are focused more on skirmishing and slaying. To quote FLC, one of the best platoon analysts out there, skirmishers' job is to pick fights and not lose them. Basically, you want to try to do something that annoys the enemy team and forces them to have to do something about you without putting yourself in major risk to where you're going to die if they turn to your direction. Good examples of this can be things like the sloshing machine, which can poke very well, but if it gets up close it doesn't kill very quickly, so it mostly tries to annoy people. A more kill-heavy style would be something like a slayer. They're responsible for pushing ahead of the team, getting kills, or taking aggressive positions, and it's generally the most common role. Some main weapon examples include things like the tri-slosher and the splatter shot, which don't do as much at a distance and can't really skirmish as well, but if they get up close can kill you very quickly. These two both play naturally into each other. Skirmishers take attention to let the slayers get in and slayers get the kills quickly that the skirmishers can't. That being said, I consider these two parts of the same role. For any aggressive weapon you play, you're probably going to be alternating between slaying and skirmishing depending on the situation, so that's why I consider it part of one role. If you play any of these weapons, you need to know how to do both. Frontlines, like most roles in this game, have a huge variety in terms of options. Some mobility style picks could include a lot of the dualies. If you want more options or bigger hitboxes, you can play stuff like the sloshers or the blasters. And if you want general ones that are more adaptable, there are the shooters. For subs and specials, frontlines generally aren't too picky, but things like bombs can help for creating opening or aggressive specials like the Trizuka or the Zipcaster to apply even more pressure. Which you play depends on you. There are a lot of frontline players who will play really any aggressive weapon and aren't picky, and some will prefer things like must be able to be mobile, must be able to paint, or must have some kind of hitbox to poke around a wall. Generally though, if you want to play this role, you have to be okay taking risks at times. You'll generally be close to people, taking fights, and going to the most risky positions. It's a valuable but difficult job. Next up are the opposite, the backlines or anchors. These are defensive long-range weapons that deny space and apply pressure. These generally take defensive positions that are behind their team. Not too far to where they can't help, but generally the furthest away. They are all about limiting your opponent's options. These weapons also enjoy good vantage points to where they can see everything and really like playing off of high ground, since pretty much every single one of them benefits with the amount of range they have. This is another one that has a wide range of subs and specials. Some more deployable ones can be a bit better there, such as ink mines or beacons, so you can set them up to continue to help your team. Specials are a similar one. They'll help you stay alive and support your team the best. If they can be used at a safer distance, such as the Killer Well 5.1, it's even better, because it means you don't have to move as much to get your special off. Some common examples of these are the Explosher, the Hydra Spiling, the E-Leader, and the brand new bow. It's important to note that while powerful, a lot of these backline weapons are generally slower or vulnerable at the wrong times. Chargers are probably the most extreme example of this, but being able to shut down the team at a distance can be very satisfying. This role is definitely for people who like more defensive play or having a vantage point to try to control the game, rather than wanting to go in too much. If you like stuff like angles or chip damage, stuff like the Explosher can work best for you. If you want to be a bit more versatile, something like the Splatling gives you a little bit of everything. And if you want to threaten with long distance kills, you got the Chargers or Bows, especially that you leader. The last of the main roles is support, which is a little bit more complicated, so I'm going to start with the most well-known playstyle. The majority of support is about maintaining paint and map control. Your job is to enable the rest of your team. These weapons almost always have a high turf output and either mobility or far painting range, meaning they can paint from a safer distance away. A lot of these weapons have to prioritize their own survival, but also has to be done closer than a backline to help their team. These weapons also almost always come with bombs, as they're essential to trapping opponents, chip damaging for your teammates, and just in general, they do an incredible amount in team fights. As for specials, they generally want supportive ones, things that help your team or disrupt opponents. They're made to create openings. This role requires a lot of game sense, or basically being aware of everything that's going on, both your team and the other team, and also it requires a lot of patience. It may sound easy to just paint the floor and don't die, but getting the best value from this role is 
very difficult, and there's a large gap between beginner and an advanced support player. Generally, the main difference in this role is if you prefer mobility and ink efficiency with things like the Splattershot Jr. or more threatening distance pressure and paint from things like a Dynamo or H3. If you like being able to help out the team, then it's a really good role for you. However, this might not be exactly what you want. I would classify a fourth role that's technically a part of support that I like to call midline. Like I said before, your job is to enable your team, but not every weapon does this through paint. A great example is Tenebrella. This weapon uses a launch shield and a threatening one-shot to take positions away from or give positions to your own team. By definition, it enables the team as it requires a lot of enemy resources to focus on the tent shield, which means there's less pressure put on your own team, even if it's not painting. Another good example is the Rapid Blaster. While it doesn't paint very well, it provides reliable chip damage at mid-range, which can help combo with front lines or deny enemy positions. Support is a really varied role, and there are many options and ways to play it to explore, probably the most diverse out of any of the roles. But like with the ones here, you should try out other options and see what fits you best. This this role is super undervalued, and while it takes a lot of time to learn, it's incredibly important and has a significant impact when mastered. This is for players who can keep track of everyone on the field and have a good idea of what they should do. So that's the four roles, but we're not quite done yet. So here's a little bit of a bonus multiple roles in one weapon. So Splatoon, unlike some other games such as Overwatch, doesn't really have clearly defined roles, so sometimes weapons can fit into multiple, and you can play them in multiple ways, adapting to what is needed the most. The best example of this that I can think of is actually the Kensa Splattershot from Splatoon 2. The main weapon can move fast and has a good kill time, but it can also paint well and it has a bomb to poke. The special of Tenna Missiles is useful for moving the opponents. You can use it to push in as the opponents are displaced, but the displacement is also useful useful for your teammates to capitalize on. So that means it could be played both like a traditional slayer and a support. For the few weapons with kits that allow multiple playstyles, it's honestly a big strength and it allows for more adaptability. Though it is harder to master both styles, it can be very rewarding. Another hybrid example could be the Blob Lobber, which focuses on chip damage, paint, and special output. But you can also pressure people from a large distance, so it's in many ways a midline and a support. So with all the roles out of the way, I want to give a little bit of advice in terms of of learning what weapons you want to play, and this is useful even if you're someone who's played the game for a while. Splatoon 1 started with only three weapon classes, rollers, shooters, and chargers, which are all shells of their former selves today. Right now, there's an insane amount of weapon classes, and the weapon classes themselves have variety, which will only grow as the game goes on. You might have no idea what you'll like to play until you try it, and I highly encourage anyone who's playing the game to give every weapon, yes, every single one, a try for at least a little bit. It'll help you not only figure out what you like, but understand the game and those weapons more in general. Playing it yourself will tell you very quickly what the weapon can and can't do. Another note is not to be trapped with your weapon pool forever. For some people, there'll be a weapon out there that's their perfect fit, and they're always gonna like it. I've played Range Blaster since the first game, and I still play it now. But there may be other weapons that you like and just didn't give as much of a try before, because your playstyle might have changed. For me, it was Dynamo Roller, a weapon I probably would have liked in the first game, but I never really gave a fair shot. And there were also some weapons like H3 that I used to play for a while and eventually fell out of. Your interests and what you're gonna like are gonna change over the years, and that's okay! You should be willing to experiment and change to do what makes you enjoy the game the most. And and same goes for roles. I originally only liked Slayer weapons, but eventually liked support, and now I kind of play both. You should always be willing to try out things and figure out what works best. Trust me, it's worth it. And with that being said, I hope this guide helped you figure out your weapon pool and what role you like to play. If you enjoy this video, consider liking, leaving a comment, or subscribing, as all of them helps me out a lot. And I'll see you guys next time.